Welcome to the seventh tutorial in the Symphony Services course. Now we've injected our dependencies via a constructor. We've also used setter methods to inject our dependencies as well. In the previous tutorial, what we did is we injected the logger service into our admin validator class using the setter method of set logger. We can actually use property injection as well. We can actually inject properties into our classes. This is what we're going to be focusing on in today's tutorial. So let's go into PHP Storm here. And what we're going to do is we're going to inject this message, please have a better password, into the admin validator class. This is tutorial seven. This is in the GitHub repository. The link to that is in the description below, and it will be in the descriptions of all of the tutorials in this series as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to inject this message into this class. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a property. Now this property needs to have the visibility scope of public. So let's do a public property. We're going to call this property min password length um, message. Not a very good property name, I know, but just for this example, uh, it will do. We're going to equal that to a default property. And we're going to scroll down here. We're going to just pass that in to the value. So that's what we're going to use. So instead of, if we scroll here, instead of using the message, we can now do this min password length message. And we're going to use that as well for the message here. Let's save that. We can remove the message for now, this message variable, because we don't need to use that. After we've saved that, we can now go up into the services.yml file and we can look at how we can inject that in. So here we have the app validator underscore admin. This is the service that we're configuring. We have the class here, the admin validator. We're passing in the argument of uh, the min password length. That is what's going into the constructor. We're also setting the logger using the set logger method. Uh, that's called when this service is instantiated. We're also going to now supply a public property, the property that we created in our class. So we can do properties. We can have another section here called properties like so, and we're going to supply the property that we wish to use. So I'm just going to save this for now. We're just going to go straight back into admin validator because what I'm going to do is just copy that property because that is what we want to inject. Then go into the services.yml, put that in as the property, and that is the key. And we're going to supply the value of injected uh, message like so. Okay, so we are now injecting the min password length message as a public property into the class. Now it has to be a public property because it needs to be accessed from outside of the class. This happens when the class is instantiated and then once it's instantiated, we then set the public property. Let's save that, go back in to the browser, refresh the page and we can see that we have uh, this message here, which is injected message. So if I went back into the uh, PHP storm here, change that to say A, B and C, save that, go back into the browser, refresh the page again, we should see that that's changed to ABC. So we are injecting that message into our service. Now, the reason why I added a default to that property value, if we go back in to uh, the IDE here, PHP Storm, scroll down to go into the admin validator, we have this default, which is please have a better password. The reason why I did that, of course, is because we cannot guarantee that these public properties are being accessed, being set. So, for example, if I removed the configuration in the services.yml, so if I just removed that, 
for instance, save this, then go back into the browser, refresh the page, we should have the default message that we have supplied in the class. One of the disadvantages of using public properties to inject things into our services is that we can't be sure if it has been injected. Also, you can't define the data type of the property that you are injecting. So you cannot ensure that this is a string or this is an integer or this is a class. But of course you can do that. You can define the data type that you are injecting if you're using a constructor, if you are using a setter method as well. Because in those function signatures, you can define a data type. You can define whether it is a string, whether it is an integer, whether it is a class. You cannot do that from a public property. Let me just give you an example here. Let's go back into the tutorial. So what I'm going to do is alter how the logger gets injected into this admin validator class. Now we know that it is an instance of the monologue logger, it is the service because it has an at symbol here. I'm going to inject this as the first argument into the constructor. So we're just going to uh, add another argument here. We're going to call this logger like so. And of course, what we're going to do is remove this for now. I'm just going to remove that like so. Let's save that, go back straight into the admin validator. We're no longer calling the set logger, but um, you know that's not necessarily required. We've changed the first argument of the constructor here. It must be a logger. It must be an instance of logger, and therefore we need to have the logger variable like so. Let's now put that in to here. So let's do this logger is equal to logger like so and I guess what we could do is just comment that out for now because we're not actually calling that that is fine so let's go back into the browser refresh the page as we can see we haven't broken anything so that is fine so let's go back into PHP storm in the IDE and change how the logger is injected into this admin validator class let's change that to be public because what we want to do is inject this as a public property into this class remove logger from here like so, removing that up there, save that, go back into the services.yml. Instead of injecting it into here, what we need to do is inject it in the property. So I'm just going to press Control Z all the way into properties here. This is a logger, like so, and that needs to be at logger. Let's remove this because that doesn't exist. Let's hit save and what we're doing is we're injecting the logger now as a public property. Now this should work like normal. So let's go back into the browser, refresh the page and yes it does work. However, because in the uh, the services file here, because we're injecting it as a public property and we're not going through any kind of function signature that checks the data type, we cannot ensure that this logger is correct. So for example, let's say logger property, let's change that to be just foo and then bar. This is going to break and there is no enforcing that the logger property, the public property must be the logger service. So let's just refresh the page. This is just going to uh, blow up. So let's go back into the browser and as you can see, it is completely failed because info, that is the logger method that we're calling, is now being called on a string. So it's just completely broken. But there was no way to ensure that that public property was a logger instance. So let's go back into the tutorial. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put that back to the call of set logger. So let's just remove that for now. Let's hit save, go back into the admin validator. Let's just uncomment this like so, set that back to private. 
Now, what I'm going to do is just save this, go straight back into the uh, services.yaml, and this time, instead of passing the logger service to set logger, let's now set that to foo bar again and see the difference in error message. So let's save that, go back to the browser, refresh the page, and we should have a completely different error message where we're saying the type error, argument one, pass to at bundle validation validator, admin validator, set logger, must be an instance of monologue logger, and the string was given. So we now have better error messages because we need to conform to the data type that that method, that method signature has. So let's go back to the IDE and tidy this all up. And this is the same, of course, if we're supplying this to the constructor, because of course with the constructor it is a method, that method can have uh, a signature to that, including the data types that we are supplying. So let's just remove that and put that back to set logger. Go back to the browser and refresh the page. This should now work as it did before. So that was injecting properties into our services. I must say it has more disadvantages than advantages. However, you may have to use this especially if you're relying on third-party pieces of software or packages that rely on public properties being set. If you've got any comments, questions, or queries on this tutorial or any other tutorials that I've done, please put them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If this tutorial has helped at all, then do show it some love, give it a thumbs up, do subscribe as well because I've got more Symphony Services tutorials coming up as well, plus other tutorials regarding web development and programming. Thanks ever so much for watching, happy coding everyone, and I'll see you again in the next tutorial. Cheers, bye.